Hi, we're going to talk about the practical practicum for calendar planning. And um, one of the things that I want you guys to remember is that you took 165 and we did a calendars um, section there, but it was a very simple calendar and I had to do one basic week. In 164 here, what we want to do are two separate calendars, one for the main floor and long-term care people and one for memory care. Sometimes we can blend these people and sometimes we can't. So we want to have two separate calendars. And that also depends on how many people you have in the building. So if I have 72 people in the building, I know 50% of them are in long-term care and probably a third of them are going to be dementia care with some severe dementia. So they need a separate calendar. At times I will blend them, but at times it's not wise to do so. So we'll, we're going to, that's the reason that you're doing two calendars for this um, class. And the other thing that you're doing two calendar, calendars is because this time I'm setting it up just as though you were an activity director and this is the steps that you would go to go through to get a good calendar every month. So uh, we will go over those in the forms you need to do or how you need to think through those to get to good calendars that people want to go to that are appropriate for the people you currently have in that building and what level they're at. So um, we will go through that. And um, the other thing I want you to remember is not all these forms that I talk about do you have to do, but they are the things that I would go through as a good activity director to get to the right conclusion of who should be in what groups for that month. So let's begin. All right, the first thing that I wanna review, we're gonna review uh, three things. One, the type of people that you're gonna be bringing down or, or are currently in your building and how do you get to that answer. We're gonna be reviewing the 21 things that an activity program can really do. And as we think about those things, we're gonna think how do, am I gonna implement that into a cooking group? Or how am I gonna make sure that it works well in the craft group or the discussion group or the exercise group? So we'll go over how to do that. And then the third thing is we're going to put the calendars on, we're going to design your calendar so you can put it on a, a calendar form so that people can see it and use it. All right, having said that, let's get back to the first, first problem that you're going to have to deal with. And that is reviewing the people that you have. Now you remember in class in 165, I told you to use the chart and it looks like this. Put it up here for you. It looks just like this. And it has your high level people and your middle uh, cognition people and your lower people and people who do just don't want to come down to groups. And then you have your people down here with your special needs, including this calendar over here about people that are younger or very, um, that are in your building or are of a different language or people who have special needs over here. So the reason that you're going to do this because it's going to give you one quick look at who you have in your building and what type, types, what levels they are at so that you know what kind of groups to put them into. And remember, you're going to do this in pencil so that you can change people. If I have a really high level person and now all of a sudden they're starting to climb, I'll move them over here or maybe down here. And so that would not be the person that maybe I would bring to a cooking group. I might bring them to a sensory stem cooking group over here. So you want to do this sheet in pencil so that you can move your people around. And please remember, every 90 days or sooner, your people will change. Some of them will improve and some of them will decline. And what they were good at 60 days ago, they may not be good at today. So that's the reason that you're going to do this. And um, since you're not in a building, what I would suggest that you do is, since you're not in a building, I would suggest what you do is think of about six people at different levels that you would, that you know, and that you, you could place on this chart and decide on what groups they, they would come to and how you would accommodate them in that group. So, for example, high level person over here, they might be able to read the um, ingredients in a cooking group. Another person who has only cognitive physical skills over here, 
they would, with adaptive equipment, and you've got your adaptive equipment people have listed back here, they would be able to say, oh, I can stir that in. I can do that part. And then you're going to have the other people that just need to smell the ingredients for the sensory stem. So that's how you can blend a group. And that's why we have to think about how we're going to run this group and how we're going to make everybody successful at it. So that's our first step. The next step that we have to do is I want to make sure that you understand and have a quick review of what the 21 things that an activity program can do. Oh, excuse me. By the way, that chart that I just showed you is on, is in your book, it's in your book here, and it's on page 113. And for right now, what I want to do is turn to page 118 and let's take a good look at what Oprah, and that's the uh, Omnibus Budgetary Re Reconciliatory Act, wants you to do in your programming. And on page 18 and 19, they have it listed what things they want to see in your cooking groups, in your craft groups. So when we talk about these things that they're looking for, it's not just in one group. It's in how you apply that activity and make it applicable for everybody. So let's just go over. Basically, this is where I got the, tw the 21 things that an activity program can do from in, in 165 when you took that. So here it's kind of listed, but it's a little bit uh, more generic. But I still think it's important that we go over it. So when you start to think about, oh, I'm going to do this cooking group, you're going to think, oh, well, I can do this and this in the cooking group. I could also go do this. I could do this this week in this cooking group so that I am more inclusive to all the people that are on the chart. Okay. So the first thing that they say that they want you to have is you want to have stimulation groups. And you know that. So you're going to have sensory stem before and after um, meals or three times a week before and after meals. And you're going to make sure that you go around one and one in a small group and talk to people and get them to use their skills and, and, and stimulate their mind. So you're going to do sensory stem groups. And sometimes it's going to be the memory care groups that we talked about. Sometimes it's going to be just the senses. Um, so that's touch, sight, sound, smell, taste, those things. Um, then you're going to have solace groups. And these are individual groups that you'll go around. So you want to make sure that you plan for this on the calendar, that you have a little bit of time three times a week to go around and do private visits and help people individually in the room because they, they are the people that are not going to perform well in group. Now, these people come in two varieties. They're very, very high and they don't want to be with those other people or they're very, very low and they need help and they need stimulus. And if you have people around them, they get distracted and they can't focus. So it's, it's the extreme two levels. So we have to provide for those solace groups. And then um, physical health. Now, when we talk about physical health, we're not only talking about physical movement, but when we're doing a physical program, we want to say, oh, this is good for you because I want you to strengthen your ankle so that you can do a one foot stand and I can get you on the bus and transfer you. I want you to move your arms and strengthen your arms so that you can help push up when I put you on the bus or what we move you in your, in your wheelchair. Okay. And uh, so this comes in all sorts of well-being, not just exercise, because in music, you cog cognitively stimulate their brain for memories or remembering a tune. And um, in, in cooking group, I can physically say, oh, this is good nutrition. So this all has to do with that well-being. Why are they in that group? It's not just for busy work. It's to learn something new, or it's to learn to do something better. So. If you build your programming on those concepts, you're going to get people to come down to groups because they're going to want to do it. But if they don't know why they're doing it, we talked about that in 165 too. If they don't know why they're doing it, they're not going to come. But if you tell them why and you motivate them to do that, they're going to come to your groups because it'll be interesting and it'll be, be fun for you too. Okay, so cognitive health. Every time I do an exercise group, I also tell them we're going to do some mental exercises. So we're going to exercise the brain now and we'll do trivia questions or I'll read them something new or we'll talk about something. And uh, sometimes I tell them that they have the ability to change their mind. And dopamine is a wonderful, 
that's why runners run because it releases the dopamine. Well, did you also know that when you stop and think pleasant thoughts, that releases dopamine too. So let's do some cognitive training, some cognitive use of, of the brain right after an exercise group. Uh, or at any other time they feel that it needs to be dropped in. Anytime that you praise somebody, it releases a dopamine because they have a good feeling. And that's where we want to want to get want to get them to. To train the brain to think pleasant thoughts releases dopamine. To, when we train the brain, when we when we praise people, that's releasing dopamine too into their brain. Emotional health, of course, we want to talk about themselves and how this activity relates to them and their life review. And uh, we want to make sure that we are empowering them with the empowerment groups, the creative groups that they enjoy so that they will come. And also, we want to make sure that we're explaining to them, okay, you're coming this one for a maintenance group because we need to get you stronger. Or we need to learn some more new things so life is interesting. So that's re referring to the emotional health that they have in there. Last one is self-respect. Um, and that means that we really want to reflect what these people, what their value system is. So this is saying a little bit more on, on person-centered care. And we need to address everybody's person-centered care so that we are accommodating their needs and the things that are interesting to them, the things that motivate them. And we want to keep them motivated. So that's what why we have self-respect in there and male-oriented activity. Now I'm going to add to this. There are times when females want to have just female activities. So we want to make sure that we have planned some of those on our calendars. So it might be it might be as simple as, okay, the third Wednesday is going to be cowboys or uh, spy movies for the gentlemen. And for the ladies or for both groups, uh, the second is going to be romantic comedies because both female and, and male enjoy that. And then maybe the first Monday of movie night will be, the first Monday of the week of that month of movie night will be a chick, a chick flick. So this is how we need to break our activity down. So when you put on movie night, just don't put movie night on there. Put on why you're having that movie night. It's cowboy night, or it's Western days, or it's romantic comedy, or it's chick flick, or it's spy stuff. Make sure that they know why they're going down the movie. Or it might be a travelogue. It might be a documentary, your movie night. So make sure that you're accommodating all needs. Okay. Um, sometimes they also have on uh, over is watching for task and um, segmentation. So in other words, when you run your groups, and this will help you think about it, are you breaking things down into tasks so that people who are slightly cognitively impaired can still follow along? And if you repeat the task or have somebody reread the directions while you're, while you're helping somebody with that task, that's going to reinforce and that's going to help them to learn sequencing and people who have had strokes they lose sequencing so it's really important that they start to relearn things step by step one basic step at a time we're going to open the box we need to pour this out we're going to separate this out we're going to use these these glue sticks here for this we're going to use a brush for this and so it, it breaks it down so that's what they're looking for in that. And then of course, on your calendars, they're gonna wanna see seasonal and special uh, holiday events once a month. So once a month, I do pull out the seasonal box and that's those big boxes that have the grass in it and the leaves in it or the sand in it. And uh, so that they get that environmental sense for the people that can't go outside. So once a month, you're gonna wanna have that on there, maybe twice a month. Um, or as much as people are interested in it, you know, if, if you have a lot of interest in it, go ahead and, and do it more. Um, but you also are going to have to have holidays because we want to keep people in tune with reality of the outside world. And next week is Christmas or uh, Easter is coming up. So we want to do our holidays as close as we can to that holiday or do activities that relate to that coming up holiday, whether it's the craft group or the cooking group. So it relates to the holiday. And then um, you are gonna have indoor and outdoor activities. 
Now, outdoor sometimes simply means we're getting on the bus and we're going. And other times, outdoor and indoor activities are going to be predicated by the weather. So I may want to be doing a gardening group, and it might be really wonderful weather. I'll be out walking in the garden. We'll maybe do that twice, garden walk, twice a month. We'll go out and do it. And then maybe once on, on the time that we're doing garden walks, I'll say, okay, today is hospital plant day. And we're going to go around and water all the plants. I'm going to deadhead the, 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 the dead flowers on them or pick up the yellowing leaves. And so I make it a little different each time so that I'm accommodating everybody. Now, sometimes it's going to happen that uh, it's going to rain and we're not going to be able to go out there and do that. But that still doesn't mean that we can't sit at the, on the other side of the window where we're nice and dry, look at the plants and I'll have a book or something. And we'll talk about planting and we'll talk about gardening or what we want to put in next year, or why we don't like that bush over there. But it's still um, accommodating that need. And you can do the same thing with bird watching. And if you have a great, you've got the bird seat out, you've got the binoculars out, you've got the books out, we're sitting in the garden, we're watching the birds. Um, if it's a rainy day, we're going to do that behind the glass, and we're going to keep dry while we're doing it. So that's what they're looking for. How are you accommodating your groups um, so that everybody's successful? The next one is community-based, and that's where we're asking the community to come into our building. So once a month or maybe twice a month, you're going to have a group like that. And it might be you're going to have the retired teachers come in and talk about their, their hobbies or their uh, collections. And I've had people come in and talk about um, a doll collection. And this one lady brought in all her, her um, beads, and they were beads of different kinds from all all around the world. Some of them represented money, some of them were um, uh, had religious, religious con connotations, others were just pretty to look at. And so we want to bring in the outside community and bring in the mayor to talk about the community. Uh, I've had politicians come in and do a talk and, and you know, try to get votes, uh, but bring the community in so they are connected with their community. And it was it was very pleasant and easy to do that. And the other other way you can do it is if a group does not have a place to meet and you want to open up your building to them, like I had the um, 4-H Bunny group come. They came once a month with their, with their meetings. They had weekly meetings, but they brought their bunnies once a month. And, uh, and so it, they didn't always meet at, at our building, but when they did, they brought their bunnies and, and it worked out really good. I think they met about twice. And uh, Red Hat Society came there and met too. And so you can invite groups in to use your building and include your people in it. And, and as long as the group is understandable, the fact that your people may be in part of their meeting. Now, for the bunnies, for the bunny group, I let them have their private little meeting. And then when they started to do their activity, we came down and watched them or helped them or they interacted with us. So you, you need to plan it out. So it, it has benefit for each group that is participating. So watch for those things. And then of course, of course, there's the cultural things that you want to get in there. And if you have Asian people or Spanish people or Far Eastern people or Middle Eastern people or European people, you want to make sure you're accommodating those cultures. And you want to make sure that you're providing food for them that they like, music that they like, or things that they can share with other people say, oh, well, this is part of the Hungarian culture, and this is uh, stuffed cabbage, and this is how you make it. And so maybe in my cooking group, we're going to do stuffed cabbage just because they told us about it. And I'm going to invite them down so that they have it. So um, those are the things that you want to watch out for. Also, please be very careful. Some gestures in different countries and different cultures mean different things. And just to be, just to be, make you aware of this, is when an American goes like this, that means great job, thumbs up, good, wonderful. Somebody else in a different culture, when you go thumbs up, that's very crude or very awful for them. So let's be aware of what our symbols mean and, and the connotations that they have. So that takes a little bit of study and that takes getting to know the culture. So talk to your people and find out what's appropriate, what's an, what, not, what is not appropriate. One other thing, especially because we have uh, Muslim people, we want to make sure that if a woman wants to wear a hijab, we do not take her out of her room unless she has that on. Because we are offending her when we get her dressed and 
brush her down and we don't put her scarf on, okay? So just, rem just be conscious of these things and be inclusive. Um, the next group is religious groups and I wanna make sure that on your calendars, I asked you last quarter to do three, have yeah, maybe two or three, three groups. This time I wanna see on your calendar, are you accommodating F um, American Indian, Native American Indian spirituality? Are you coming, accommodating Hindus or um, Muslims or um, Buddhists? Um, and I would even go so far, there are times when you have certain people that are strictly religious and if they are congregationalists, they're different than a Baptist and a Baptist is different than a Methodist and then the Methodist is different than the Lutheran. So we wanna make sure that we're sensitive to that and we, are, we talk to people and find out where their central interests are. But as far as religion goes, you need to really accommodate the different, the, the different type of people in your building. And if that means if they wanna have the, uh, a men's group for the Baptists and, it's, and they don't want to, to include everybody, then make sure you have, they have their own private meeting and set it up in the dining room so they can do it. If they're okay with it and they just want to have a men's group with, with uh, all types of people in it uh, and, and discuss their religion, that's fine. But we have to make sure we're accommodating the needs of the people. And if somebody doesn't want to come to that, they can't be forced to go to that and say, oh, well, that's the men's group for this week. No, no, we will set up a separate men's group for, for their accommodation. So you see how much different and how much more detailed it is in this class and why I want you to get to that point. Okay. Uh, the last one, uh, Oprah, is always watching for your adaptive and special needs. So make sure that if somebody can't see, they're positioned in the front where they can see the movie. Because if we have them in the back, we're harming them and we're going to get tagged on it. And they watch for these things. So make sure that that you care when you do your care plan, say, okay, so-and-so has to be three feet away from the, or two feet away from the, from the screen so they can see it. Um, so uh, those things and same thing with hearing and um, also with the adaptive equipment, make sure you've looked at all those tapes, review them if you need to, and know that you have the enlarged handles for, for cleaning, know that you have the, the suction cups for holding things in place so that people can do the, the crafts more independently. Okay, and then activities for all ages. Make sure that your younger people are accommodated. If that means they're gonna have a special music time, they're gonna have a special music time and you're gonna get it on the calendar. It might be, a, might be later in the evening, but you have to have the evening groups anyway. So, and um, uh, weekend groups. So it might be at a different time, but you have to, this cal calendar planning is very, very important. There's one more group that we have to talk about and that is we wanna make sure that you do leave a space on your calendar where you have in-room rounds. You're probably gonna do it twice. Uh, I usually did it about twice a day, but sometimes with, dip, with the different carts that you bring around, the different things that you go to visit with, it'll be on, on different days too. So I would do mail for everybody in the, in the morning and pass things out. And then um, in the evening, I would go around again and make sure that that people had things that they wanted for overnight or a movie that they wanted to watch or uh, uh, something else or a uh, craft that they were working on extra paint or whatever it needs so i would do a, a round in the afternoon late afternoon to make sure that i accommodated everybody before i left for the day so they weren't stranded without something to do that evening and then always check back in the morning find out but the, your different carts that you're going to have like i had an ice cream trolley that i should took, took around everybody wants ice cream they can't always get out of bed to come to ice cream social. So I pushed around the ice cream um, trolley and I encouraged staff. Now this will depend on your building, but I did encourage staff sometimes it has take a few minutes, have a small ice cream cone with their resident so that they could do some socialization without doing care while they're doing it. So that's going to depend on your building. But I had an ice cream trolley. I had a treat trolley. I had a drink trolley. I took around al alcohol that for people who could have it. And that was mostly my assisted living, but also in long-term care, people are, are um, approved to have alcohol. And you have to monitor it and get it from the um, med cart. But also when I had my um, drink uh, trolley that went around, I had 
non-alcoholic um, beer and a non-alcoholic wines. And, and, and I have, uh, then also you're gonna have your, your other trolleys that you push around with the crafts on them. And I had a library trolley that I pushed around with movies and books and magazines on it. So you have all kinds of different trolleys that you're gonna set up, switch the boxes in and out so you can get them around. But you wanna make sure that you give it a notation on your calendar when you're gonna do that. So Mondays and Thursdays were usually ice cream and library trolley was uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. And so you will break it out on different days that you bring things around so that you put it on the calendar and you make a notation so people know when it's gonna happen. Okay, having said that, let's, before we go into the different forms on how we're gonna do this, have I covered everything yet? Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna get into exactly how you're gonna set up this calendar and the way to think through it in just a minute by going through the forms together. Um, but the last thing I wanna do before we start into those forms, I wanna read through what I'm ex expecting on your calendar so that you get everything covered. Now these are the, in, the, in the instructions that I sent out to you, but I'm just gonna read them to you to make sure that we are understanding each other of what the actual expectation is. And I have that right here, I hope. Yeah, okay. So when you do your calendars, I'm expecting that after we've, we've organized how we're gonna put these on, on the calendar, when your finished calendar is done, you are going to have two separate calendars, one for um, long-term care and skilled people and one for memory care. So you're gonna be providing me with two full month calendars. Not just one week, but a full month. And I'll show you the form in a few minutes. But on these calendars, I want you to remember uh, under your instructions, under tasks, I've listed the things that I'll be watching for so that I can give you extra points so that you get it right. And the first thing that I want is I want you to code what room this happened in. So like if it's gonna happen in, in the dining room, you put the time, you put the name of the activity, our cookie group, our dessert making today, cooking group, um, and then you're gonna put behind it DR for the dining room, because that's where it's gonna happen. Or maybe it's gonna happen in the lobby, so you put L. Or maybe it's gonna happen in the private dining room. So um, you'll put PR, private room. Okay, so you're gonna make up a code system so that people know what room to go to. They'll know the time, they'll know the name of the activity, and they'll know where it's where it's being held. Okay. Um, then the other thing that you want to do on every monthly calendar, there is always that space. Here, let me just show you a quick example. So when you're all done, your calendar may look something like this, and there's always a space where there's not enough days in the week, and that's an empty box. And in that empty box, that is a very good place to kind of summarize, welcome to the activities, we have a variety of things. And then you might note, mail is passed out every morning at 9.30 or 4.30 in the evening, whenever you're doing it. And uh, daily rounds occur. And library trolley comes on Tuesdays. And we have special music on Wednesday. So I make a little summary up here of the special things that are happening that people usually don't want to miss. And then after that, you're gonna notice most Tuesdays are pretty much the same because they've got cooking groups or you've got your church groups. And it happens every Tuesday or it happens every Friday that you're gonna have a travel log or something like that. So basically you have a calendar that is very consistent so people know what's happening and when it's happening and when the special different in movie groups are. So first one might be Western movie and that next one might be romantic and the next one might be uh, travel log or something. So you're gonna kind of note that per week, but, it's, but the, the movie will actually always occur at the same time, 2.30 uh, on Tuesdays or whenever you, whenever you set it up. So that I'll be watching for those. And um, let's go back to our list here. The other thing we're gonna be watching for is Make sure that you're doing 
your empowerment um, groups in the afternoon, your creative groups in the afternoon, because those groups will be usually smaller and you'll have um, uh, more higher level people because these those are the people that are not going to be taking naps. Make sure you do your maintenance groups in the morning. Those are like your exercise groups, um, your cognitive groups, your some of your social groups, um, your physical movement groups, sometimes music groups because that's a, a cognitive stimulation for the for the mind. So you want to uh, and you want to also make sure you have your sensory stem groups right before dinner, right before lunch, or right before a dinner period, so that you keep people stimulated. Um, so. Make sure you, you have maintenance groups in the morning. So that would be from like 9.30 until 12. And then uh, in the afternoon, when you start your afternoon groups, uh, which will usually start about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, the high level uh, arts and crafts stuff, uh, the more complicated task things, um, do those um, starting about 1.30, 2 o'clock. And then by 3.30, if that group is still running, and sometimes it will be, you can then invite the lower level people into it and do some sensory stim with them while everybody is, is finishing up their, their arts and crafts or while they're finishing up their cooking group or, or in tasting the cooking stuff. Then you can, then you can include your um, um, people that are less able to physically do the group but would, it would benefit from the stimulation of the group. Um, let's see, what else am I looking for on that calendar? Okay, we've got that. Then um, sometimes you're also going to have two different types of groups. You might have an easy bingo group and a harder bingo group later in the, in the afternoon or in the evening. So sometimes I'll run a regular bingo group or an easier bingo, bingo group, slower pace. And then in an evening activity, I'll have the higher level people who don't want to go to bed yet, and we'll do games in 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 the evening, and they'll be higher level. So they'll. Sometimes they can even get self-directed and run those groups themselves. And uh, so there, there's a difference there. And I want you to make sure that sometimes it's okay to have bingo twice a day, but if you're running them for different groups, okay. Or different levels, I should say. All right. And then the last thing I'm gonna be looking for is your special events. So once a month, you're gonna have somebody probably come in and do some entertaining. Once a month, you're probably gonna have resident council. Yeah, better. And then once a month, you're going to have like a special party. And those are the times when we change the calendar so that we can get that all done. And we talked about that last time. And again, there will be certain days when you're going to cut back your regular activities because it, because you do have a special event. So I'll be watching for how did you change that day that you had that special event. Okay. And I will also be watching at the end of the month, did you also, um, <coughs> excuse me, lighten your week a little bit so you could remember to get all the extra work you have to do, like the budget, like making the calendar, like writing the newsletter, um, and some of the extra things that happen at the end of the month where you have extra paperwork. So the last week might be a little bit lighter you may not have as many activities. On the average, however, you want to have at least four groups that you're running every day, four to six groups, and each group will probably run about 30 to 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, usually people need a break and they need to come and go or, or, or they don't want to stay for that next group. So you want to have a little bit of break time in between about five, 10 minutes. So they can reset up for the next group. Um, without leaving the room or without leaving, leaving as many people. And we talked all about how to do that, how to set up your carts so that you can run three or four activities. Boom, boom, boom. So, and if you have questions about that, you know, you can call me and we'll, and I'll talk about it or refresh your memory on that. Okay. I think that's covering everything that I was looking for in the calendars. And so let's go back and start to set up, start to set them up. As I'm doing this, this is a pre-recorded session, so if you have questions, I will answer questions after you've looked at this, this pre-recorded version. Okay, so one of the first things that, uh, the first project that you're going to have in the calendar assignment is something that in 164 you guys saw before, but this time 
Uh, I'm not going to walk you through it. You're going to do it yourself. And this time I want the um, master planner form that we're going to do to reflect. I want this to reflect all the different things that you learned in chapters five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So look at all those different activities that are available for you to do and figure out where they would best place. And also be thinking, oh, this would be a good activity to do for sequencing. If I set it up like this, or this would be a good exercise to do if I set it up like this and I make sure that I do a cognitive game at the end or I do a review of the body parts that they use and have them do some memory recall. Okay, so that's where I'm going with this. And remember an exercise, I'm, I've used cook, cooking for a couple examples, but remember you can have various different types of exercise groups. So over here, when you're putting exercise, clicking this in to put exercise for, for um, three times a week, list for me, list for me, what ex types of exercises you're gonna do. So you might have gentle, gentle, yoga stretches. You might have Tai Chi chair movement. You're going to have exercise with music. You're going to have anything goes and it's going to be a wild, crazy exercise where you're throwing and doing a lot of gross motor, motor skill. So list for me more in depthly what these activities are going to be and what they're going to look like. Because maybe on Tuesday, you're going to be doing gentle exercises, yoga stretches. And on Wednesday, you're going to do anything goes. And on Thursday, you're going to do chair chi. Or on Friday, you're going to do modified, modified sports in, with your exercises. So show me, list all the different types of exercises that you plan to include. So this means that this is going to get very much extended. And I believe every time you click it in, you can extend the form. So I want you to use the forms in the class because when you click on it, it's going to let you type down more and more and more and more. Okay. So in your first list over here, you're going to put in the holidays and the special events that you have to run once a month. And then over here, you're going to chart where you're going to get the music and how you're going to run it a little bit, just like we did last in, in 160 in 165. Okay. Now this time we're going to put in our empowerment groups. Those are all our creative things. So when I see you listing um, movies as an empowerment group, show me what days are you going to do that? Are you going to have four different types of movies? List them underneath here and when it's going to be. So it's going to be Westerns on Monday, Romantic Comedy on Wednesday, Documentary on Thursday, Travel Group on, on Saturday or Sunday. List it. List it where you're going to put in. So, um, and notice, please, when you're running your calendars, you have to have calendar events for Monday through Sunday because they don't go home and go, they're there. And we have to provide activities seven days a week. Now you don't have to run them all. You're gonna have volunteers or an assistant or somebody come in and run them, but they have to be on the calendar. They didn't go home on Saturday and Sunday. They were there looking for something to do that we have to provide. So that's the way I want this time filled up. So do all your creative groups over here. And if you're kind of stumped, remember you go back to uh, 165 and on page, I believe it is three, has a group of empowerment groups listed. And then that'll help very easily develop your pattern of, oh, every Tuesday is gonna be a church group because that's when the volunteer comes in. And every Wednesday is going to be a him sing because that's when that volunteer comes in or that's when I'm going to run that group. And every Friday is going to be Bible study because I have a high level, level group that want to talk about the Bible. Or I have a Bible group on, on Saturday because they're going to use the private dining room for a men's Bible discussion. So it's going to really help you set up what you need to get on the calendar to come to accommodate everything. And then in this calendar over here, we're going to put all our maintenance groups. And we've got a lot of those. So let's make sure that we're doing social um, uh, conversations or social discussions three times a week. 
and sets your stem three times a week. And memory care, uh, maybe twice, where we're going to do trivia games. So make sure you list all those different types of activities that you're going to put there. Okay, the rest of this is pretty uh, uh, basic. We did it before, but we have any ideas that you have for community things that want to come in, because once a month they're going to come in, and you're going to start to list them so you can make contact and give them a call so that they can come in. And maybe someone's going to give you a special craft project that you want to get done or a special cooking group that you want to get done. So make sure that you list these things so you can put them into your calendar during the course of, of the year or the month. And then uh, last one's cooking. And then any special outings or themes that somebody comes up with a good idea. Oh, let's have Carnival Day. Oh, let's have the Easter Bunny come. So you want to kind of list these things so that, that you'll know to plan for them. So that's the first sheet that you're going to fill out. And um, once you have that done, the next sheet that you're going to have pull up It's going to be a regular calendar. And what I ask the team to do at the college is just put out a um, word processing calendar. And that way, there's two forms in here. And what you're going to have to do is when you type in your activities, nine o'clock uh, exercise group, yoga stretches. And then over here, nine o'clock exercise group, chair chi. You're going to type all those different things in across across for your week. And then um, maybe over here, you're going to have a, uh, uh, cognitive uh, games. Or after that, you do a fancy nails three times a week so that you space all these different activities out that you, that you want to get done off of your master calendar form. And then you'll, then you'll put in your creative groups in the afternoon. And then um, you're also going to put in here rounds. So that means this box is going to get pretty darn full. So what I would encourage you to do is type it in in seven point type. And then when you go to enlarge this, the type will be big enough that people can read, but you can get everything in. Now, what you're going to have to do when you go to print it out on the job, you're going to have a bigger sheet of paper because it, it, what, what we have um, printed from here to here is now going to extend itself and it'll go down as you fill this out. Now, if you feel uncomfortable doing your calendars, marking everything out that you put on your master form onto here, then, and you would rather write it out, you can take a regular calendar and just write it out for me and, or type it out and, and stick it on a, a regular calendar. I don't care. We can, you can then um, scan that and send it to me. So the first one that you're going to do, it's going to be for your high level people for your skilled and long-term care people. And they are, gonna, they are gonna be fairly cognitive. Now that doesn't mean that if we have a cooking group on Tuesday at 1.30, 2 o'clock, we'll run that cooking group. And then maybe right after that cooking group, an hour later, we're gonna have Taster's Choice and we'll bring in the, some of the people from the, the, the unit or the people that are cognit cognitively impaired and let them come to the second part of that cooking group. So that's uh, one of the ways that you'll end up blending the group. So maybe on Tuesday, I'll have a cooking group at 1.30. And then at 2.30, we have Taster's Choice, where they come in and they, they have a cup of coffee with us, and they enjoy the, the cooking. So that, that's how we set that up. So uh, when you have questions about call me. I don't want you to struggle with this. But again, you're going to be doing two calendars, one for the main floor and one for the, um, the sensory, the uh, more has more sensory stem in it and more cognitive, cognitive, lower cognitive things for our memory care unit. They need separate calendars. You will find that the cognitive uh, impaired people will not do nearly as much. So you're going to have maybe four groups. And um, um, when you do that, the um, cognitively impaired one, Remember, you're going to go back to having normalization skills, a cognitive skill, and a physical movement. And you're going to do that in the morning, and then you're going to repeat that again in the afternoon. 
And when you do have um, your memory units, there'll be smaller number of people in it because you need to accommodate them more uh, completely and they will wander in and out of the groups. So their time frames will be a little bit varied and you don't worry about that. But as long as you say, okay, at one o'clock I'm gonna be in, uh, or at two o'clock I'm gonna be down in the, in the unit and I'm gonna do another cookie group and we're gonna have taste of choice after that for the really low people that cannot participate in the cooking but would enjoy the stimulation of it. So I hope you see how I, I'm hoping that you'll start to think about these groups so that you can set them up and give them different time frames so that it'll be working. And the reality is sometimes you um, set it up, oh gee, that didn't work out well. So next month you're gonna change it. Or you might even change it that month, re redo your calendar and say, oh gee, that really was a disaster. I'm not gonna set it up like they got. I'm gonna redo these calendars and get out new calendars. But that only happens when you're a beginning activity director. Uh, as you get better at it and you understand your people more, you'll know what groups to bring into what group. And uh, you'll have that chart, that master planner that we did, where we know who fits into what group. And that, having said that again, you can't just build a calendar and run it 12 times because your people are going to change. And so that's why you want to want to go to your review, the column review, and oh, this person's moved over here. I want to make sure I get them into this group now. Instead of bringing them to the one o'clock cooking group, they should come to the two o'clock cooking group. Okay. All right. I hope that will be helpful to you to do that. When you're finished with the, making both your calendars, I'll give you an example of what that might look like. And you can get calendars from a lot of different places, but that is, here's uh, one of my older ones for long term care. And this is what it looks like. And it was fairly easy for people to read and understand. And what will happen is you're going to put this up in the building and it's going to be in the large, uh, you'll make a big one and it's in the, in the lobby someplace where you can enlarge this to like four feet by five feet. And, you know, through a printing company. And then you're going to put them in all the rooms and then different on different bolts and forth. But people are still going to ask you, what are we doing today? And don't get discouraged. What I would encourage you to do is to make a little cheat sheet like this. And I pass the cheat sheets out to all the aides. Just make it once a month. And I pass this cheat sheet out to all my aides. And so, as you can see, it tells, tells you the basic things that we did all through the week. And these are standard. These are my standard things. It'll happen every week on that day. But then at the bottom, I put down in here the special things that happen. Like on Wednesday, we have special music with Hall, with Phil Hall. And he comes twice a month. So it's the second and the fourth uh, Thursdays that he would come in. Or I have a special note about when the minister comes in. And so I just have special notations in here. So there'll be things that people won't want to miss. And if they look at this and say, oh, I want to come to that group. I want to come to this group. Oh, I don't want to go there. Don't get me up. Let me sleep in. And it becomes very easy for the aides to work with the residents and for the residents to know what they want. And sometimes you, the aides or I will highlight what we know they want to go to so that the aides know to get them up for it and it stays in their room. Okay, I hope that that will be helpful for doing your calendar planning. I, this is not, I don't want you to struggle with it, but it is gonna take some thinking on your part about what kind of groups you, you wanna run or you need to run. So first I would encourage you, take on page 113 a copy and put in some people that you would wanna to get to groups. I know you're not working in a building, so think of five or six people that you know and what they might like to do and put them on that chart. And then start to think, oh, okay, well, what kind of activities would these people like? Now, go through the book and you're gonna see a whole bunch of activities. Now, there may be activities that you wanna just do yourself. I mean, something that you thought of that would be fun. Go ahead and do it. Make it into an activity because that's what you do as an activity director. Oh, gee, we're gonna take this modified sport, but we're gonna play it this way. And we're, we're gonna take bocce ball, but we'll, we'll modify it so we can play bocce ball. I thought so-and-so would like this, but boy, she wouldn't like that because she has difficulty with her upper body. But let's, I'll make a game for her 
where 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 I'll do next week, and it will have more kicking in it, so she can kick the ball because she can use her feet better. And so you just want to think about where and when these activities can work. I want you to make sure that um, you do have evening activities. An evening activity is you'll have two of them usually a week, and they have to be 30 minutes after the dinner hour. They will look for those on your calendars. They are going to look for Saturdays and Sundays. They don't expect Saturday and Sunday to be as full, but you want to have at least four groups that are available at certain times. Now, uh, on my Sundays, it's hard to run a Sunday because I wasn't there, but I would make sure that somebody went out of the A's or somebody went around and did rounds to deliver mail. And um, uh, I also on Sunday had a 11 o'clock devotion where the chapel was open and I made sure that whoever was, was running the program or whoever was the manager of the day put out the devotional things on the table and invited people down, served some coffee and either read to them or had one of the people who could read, a resident who could read, lead the group and lead some devotionals. And uh, then usually in the afternoon we play a card games or roll them up or uh, I had crafts out that people could independently do and just had somebody there, the movie and the managers, cue people to come down and to start or take out some of the, the crap in the bag stuff so they, they could do stuff. Or if they wanted to do a you know, game, have that set up or the puzzle table is set up so that people could do crossword puzzles. Um, and your weekend manager or whoever it is, or the volunteer, whoever is supposed to be running that for you, should make sure that these things are open and available and happen on, on time. And uh, then at three o'clock, we would always push around the ice cream trolley on a Sunday afternoon. And that made for a nice day for people, just enough for them to do, even though we weren't at full, I, I shouldn't say full staff, but the regular staff wasn't there to do it. Okay, that should help you. The last thing I, that I wanna say to you, and I want you to remember this, is when you put something in your calendar, it has to happen. So if you put something on the calendar and like saying, the dog was supposed to come, but they called in sick. You still have to run some type of pet therapy. So the dog comes in and calls in that morning and I have it on there that at uh, 1030 is pet therapy. What I'm gonna do then is get people together for pet therapy and say, hey, I have to explain the dog. The dog is sick, so he couldn't come in. And today, or the, do or the dog's owner went on vacation and he went out on the boat with them, so he's not coming today. So um, then I would set up a video about how to groom a dog or um, how to train a dog or how to train a cat or, you know, or I would bring out a book that had all different um, animal species and we talked about what our, what our favorite ones. But at, what I'm saying is you cannot just let it slide. You can't say, oh, well, it didn't happen today and the dog didn't come, so we're not doing anything for the next 45 minutes, for the next hour and a half. That cannot happen because what you're doing then is causing mental harm. These people are expecting this to happen. And if it happens more than three times in one month where you do not replace an activity that you posted on the calendar that you were gonna run, they can call the state and complain. And if they get enough complaints, when they come in, they're gonna investigate what happened and why did you cause mental harm. If this was part of their care plan that you programmed them to do and you didn't provide it, why didn't you provide that treatment? That's how serious it is. If that happens three months in a row where you have activities that you were on the calendar and you did not run them, your building can be fined as much as $6,000, anywhere from three to $6,000 for mental harm. So if you post something on the calendar, you've got to run it. Come hell or high water, you've got to figure out a substitution for that, for that project or for that um, activity. Now, I don't wanna scare you, I just wanna inform you so that you can be good activity directors. All right, after this session, um, uh, there will be, or you may call me at any time with questions. And uh, on the fourth week when this runs, there will be a Zoom session that you can come into and I'll post that. And we spend the next 30 minutes after you watch this video and ask me questions. And that'll be at a certain time. If anybody misses that um, 
group Zoom session, then you may call me and we will run it together. I mean, I'll go over any questions that you have. I'll walk you through it. So I'll do either a private Zoom session with you or a small group. I'll set up a small group uh, Zoom session with a couple of people, or you can call me on the phone and we will talk about how to complete this project. So I don't want anybody turning this project in too late and I don't want anybody not turning it in. And I don't want to end up the last two days of this term, have you call me and say, Connie, I'm having problems with it. Let's do this ahead of time. Let's take a lot of stress out of your life and out of my life, okay? So around the fourth week, please be thinking about doing this project and try to have the project done by before the sixth week, okay? Because after that, we only have two weeks and we've got the big documentation project to do. So get on it and get it done and enjoy doing it and I will help you, okay? All right, that's all for today and I'll see you later. Okay, bye now.